When most people think of Southern California, what comes to mind are beaches, surfing, lavish mansions, and of course, Hollywood. But if you take a deeper look, the southern half of the state is one of the most biodiverse regions in the country. Look below the surface of any creek, and you just might catch a glimpse of the endangered Southern California steelhead. The Southern California steelhead is one of California's most tenacious and adaptable salmonids. Their historic range included every watershed in Southern California that drains into the Pacific Ocean. The steelhead in Southern California occupied virtually every watershed in Southern California and there's several thousand miles of stream habitat. The Southern California steelhead a distinct population segment extends from the Santa Maria River in the north in San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara County, all the way down south to the U.S.-Mexican border at the Tijuana River. Steelhead are ocean-going rainbow trout. They are born in the freshwater rivers and streams and then migrate to the ocean, where they mature. Unlike salmon, they do not die after spawning and can come and go from fresh to salt water several times throughout their life. Southern California steelhead are unique in their ability to tolerate warmer water temperatures and display a great variance of choice in their stages of life history. Steelhead occupy and make use of all habitat types in these smaller, more confined river systems of the South Coast. The Southern California steelhead differ a little bit from other species in that they exploit the entire reaches of these streams that they occupy from the estuaries to the very extreme headwater reaches. These fish, if you look at them very carefully, examine their life history and the way they exploit their habitats, they're a perfect mirror of the chaparral environment of Southern California. I think that they're fantastic because we're so used to um, thinking that our watershed or that our uh, Mediterranean ecosystem is so different from up north and you think of big fish two and three feet long fish as being something that you only see up on the Klamath or up in the redwoods for instance but to know that we have these magnificent fish in Southern California and that they're still here they're still having these relics populations that very few people know about is really really neat and and it's it's something that's inspiring The native Chumash people of the South Coast had a relationship with steelhead for over 15,000 years. They harvested the fish at certain times of the year as an important food source. In the early 1900s, steelhead were still in such great abundance they provided excellent sport for the intrepid angler. People came from far and wide to fish these large ocean-going trout. Trout and steelhead angling in Southern California were a, a major recreational activity with significant economic implications. We know from looking at the historic record that these fish were an important recreational species in Southern California and were so right up until the construction of the major dams in the early uh, 1950s and late 1940s. Not every winter, but if we had a good, nice rain, it would come up. When the rain stopped, the water all went out to the ocean. But it left uh, pools of water. So I got a, I went home and got a gunny sack, and I went down and got a fish. 
Just with your bare hands? It was a big one. A big one? <laughs> yeah. It was steel head. The steelhead is such a big, magnificent fish. We call it sort of a totemic animal. It's a big, beautiful species that most people don't even know is here. I'm sure the people that do know it's here, they want to see it. They've heard all the lore and the stories about movie stars coming and fishing out these two foot long fish and larger uh, in great abundance back in the 20s and, and before that. So among people that know about fish, definitely it's a great allure, and I think that it would be if more people knew about it, they would be much more interested in, in trying to do something to save it. Historically, we had thousands of fish running uh, in these streams between the Santa Maria River and the Tijuana River at the U.S.-Mexican border. Today, the runs are probably uh, in the low hundreds of fish. By the mid-1940s, human encroachment and subsequent residential, commercial, and agricultural development began to take its toll. The age of dams was upon us. By the late 1950s, most of Southern California's free-flowing rivers had been trapped behind walls of concrete, leaving little or no water for fish and blocking off access to miles of historic spawning and rearing habitat. At the time, little thought was given to fish passage in regards to development along the rivers. As a result, the runs of steelhead have begun to precipitously decline. Historically, much of the spawning and rearing took place in the upper watersheds and steep canyons that held colder spring-fed pools of water year-round. Once a batch of eggs was laid and hatched, those fry had the choice to head upriver and rear in the remote headwaters or head downriver and rear in the brackish estuaries. The following winter, when the rains come, those same fish have the choice to leave with the high water and head down into the ocean, or stay in the rivers for another season. On the same token, mature fish returning from the ocean have the choice to return to their natal stream, find another river with better seasonal conditions, or even wait another season for in-stream conditions to improve. These choices provide a greater chance for the survival of the species. Southern steelhead are uh, the most genetically diverse steelhead along the west coast and that diversity is going to be really important as um, the climate change predictions show that streams further north and populations further north are going to start experiencing conditions that are more similar to what we have here in Southern California with increased water temperatures and uh, potentially less stream flow and these southern steelhead are more adapted to be able to deal with those conditions so those genetics are going to be really important for fish further north to be able to adapt to climate change over time. Well the habitats in Southern California are uh, significantly different from the habitats in Central and Northern California. They're much more variable, the fish are subjected to much more extreme conditions in flows, sediment loads, and water temperatures. But these fish uh, are highly uh, variable and adaptable and they have been able to persist under natural conditions in these watersheds. So our goal is to make sure that these fish uh, have the opportunity to continue to adapt and evolve in response to natural changing conditions. Southern California steelhead in a way have should not exist um, because here we have these fish that are going out to sea and coming back into streams that are heavily urbanized. That anything you can imagine that's been done to a stream has been done to the streams that contain steelhead in Southern California, and yet they keep coming back every year. Southern California steelhead have been blocked from over 90% of their historic habitat. This loss of habitat, coupled with the decline of water quality and quantity, along with climate change, have brought these fish to the brink of extinction. The Southern California classified steelhead is now one of the most threatened species of native fish in the United States. In 1997, they were listed as endangered under the Federal Endangered Species Act. This action has prompted the National Marine Fisheries Service to draft a species recovery plan. The Southern California Steelhead Recovery Plan is a guidance document based on the best scientific data. It lays out a region-wide strategy, which if properly implemented, will serve to protect and accelerate the recovery of the species. 
A critical requirement of the plan is cross-sector cooperation of government resource agencies, water departments and districts, environmental nonprofits, and private interests. I think in Southern California, the, the primary limiting factors are fish passage barriers, blocking fish from getting from the ocean up to the, the good perennial habitat they need to get to. Having enough water um, in the streams, both for habitat and migration, is another main issue. And then finally, the kind of the third big issue is, is preserving and enhancing lagoons uh, near the mouth of the, the different streams. One of the unique things we have in Southern California is a lot of the tributary streams and headwaters are relatively pristine and protected in national forests. Um, the problem is we can't get fish from the ocean up to those critical spawning and rearing habitats. The good thing is we actually have mapped out just about all the migration barriers um, in the Southern California steelhead region. We know where they are, we know what needs to happen to address them, and a lot of it now is just implementing uh, different fish passage projects at these different sites. Here in Southern California, California trout is committed to the restoration of the endangered Southern California steelhead. Obviously, restoring the Southern California steelhead uh, will be a great challenge, but it's a challenge that environmental stakeholders like California Trout, working with resource agencies like the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the National Marine Fisheries Service are up to. In 2012, with funding from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's Fisheries Restoration Grant Program, California Trout formed the South Coast Steelhead Coalition, which is dedicated to the restoration of steelhead in San Diego and Orange Counties. Cal Trout also created the Santa Clara River Steelhead Coalition, which is dedicated to the restoration of steelhead in a watershed that covers both Ventura and Los Angeles counties. California Trout is working with other coalitions to restore fish passage on waters, including the San Inez River at Bradbury Dam, Matillaha Creek at Matillaha Dam, the Vern Freeman Diversion on the Santa Clara, the Santa Felicia Dam on Piru Creek, the Ringe Dam on Malibu Creek, and finally an Arizona Crossing on Zuma Creek. Restoring Southern California steelhead is a real challenge, but there are opportunities in this challenge. The opportunities in Southern California provide us a, a chance to learn how to reintegrate these fish into watersheds that have been extensively developed for human uses, and lessons can be learned there that can be applied in other watersheds which may not now be as heavily developed, but will be in the future. I see the steelhead as the field of dreams fish because if you give them habitat and give them half a chance, they're very resilient and they'll take, take the habitat and reproduce madly and pretty soon you'll have a lot of fish. We've done the easy fixes for the most part and now we're faced with really trying to reverse a hundred years worth of trends of development where we've put in these passage barriers, we've diverted water, we've changed riparian habitat, we've developed right next door, we've increased our fire frequency, we've got highways and utilities sharing very narrow competing spaces with creek channels. We've encroached in every single way you can possibly encroach into the, into the natural world. And to reverse that and to have people make the decision to actively not do that anymore and figure out how we can reconcile and live with rather than take over the other species with whom we share our environment. Who are we to separate the families of nature that live side by side with humans? We all have a responsibility to protect it. We all have to be the voice of that that can't speak for itself. A lot of people accuse me and I know others of kind of being fish huggers and focused in on just steelhead, but steelhead are kind of the they're kind of the canary in the coal mine. If you have a healthy run of steelhead, you know that you've got good water quality, you've got a healthy watershed. So you're actually 
providing the, the conditions for a healthy watershed and communities around it. So I kind of feel like restoring steelhead to me isn't necessarily about fishing, it's about improving watershed health for all the other species that will benefit from it. This whole idea of reconciliation and recognizing that fact of interconnectedness, that we think we're living separate and apart, but in fact we're not. The fish are very much a part of our world, the trees are very much a part of our world, the creek, the frogs, the bugs, they're all very much a part of our world and if we take them out of the equation, what does that do for us as human beings? It really makes supporting our lifestyle, providing clean air to breathe, providing clean water to drink, keeping temperatures at a place where we can be comfortable, those become more and more challenging and more and more expensive because we have to artificially do what the natural environment is already doing for us right now for free. And those, that cost-benefit analysis of looking at how these ecosystem services really do play a role in our economy, we just haven't gotten very far in that conversation. And that's, I think, a really important piece of the puzzle that we have to get to in order to have the aha moment amongst the general public that it's not really about we're saving the fish, it's really about we're making the environment functional for all of us, not just the fish, but for us as well. And if we don't do that, the cost to us are ultimately going to be really huge as opposed to the cost of keeping things going the way they are now or fixing what's broken. The time for action is now. Southern California steelhead are not doomed to extinction. We can collectively make a choice to save these remarkable fish and allow them to coexist with us into the future. Please help us by supporting organizations dedicated to the recovery of this important species.